If you are using the Trustmaster T16000M as a joystick for Flight Simulator 2024, you might want to add some additional functionality, but you don't have simply enough buttons. In this video, I will show you some tricks how to resolve that issue. Let's roll the intro and then let's look at how to do that. In one of my previous videos, we looked at how to configure the Trustmaster T16000 mic for Flight Simulator 2024. We all know that the basic configuration of the joystick isn't that, I would say, optimal because it changes a lot of functionality. And if you're coming from Flight Simulator 2020, you're completely, I would say, need to start from scratch. Right? So what I figured out is that there is a way to take kind of extend the number of functionalities offered by the joystick. Because by default, right in my previous video, we assigned one function per button or per axis. But in some cases, you might want to add some more functions. For example, you might want to do the rudder trim or maybe some other trims. And that's say, impossible if you would need to use one button. However, there's a trick. So we've got this custom setup, right? So if you don't have this custom setup, then have a look at the top of this video because there's a link to the previous video are we going to discuss this in detail how to configure it but for now let's look for trim if you search for trim you will see a lot of options right you can see the aileron left trim the right trim and we see the rudder trim left and right now by default you can see that only one button is assigned to this i would say function so let's assume that we want to reuse that trim down option which is joystick button number six also for the aileron trim left Normally, if you would press that button right, it will result in a conflict because it says, hey, there's one item assigned to that. However, if you do the following, you press that button number six, and then in combination with the uh, joystick on top, right, the POV to the left, you will be able to configure an additional functionality, which doesn't result in a conflict. Now, the same thing can be done, of course, for the right side. So right, pressing the button, and here we go. So now we've got two additional functions configured to the cockpit or to the joystick, of course. Now we can do the same thing for the rudder, right? So if we go to the rudder, we see rudder trim left, rudder, a reset rudder trim and rudder trim right. So let's do the same thing. But in this case, we're going to use button number nine. So button number nine, that's the one below six, and then press the left button and for right. Also button number nine, but then the POV to the right side. And to reset the rudder trim, we're going to use button number nine in combination with button number two. So if you would go to this uh, gear, you can see which buttons have been assigned, right? So in this case, button number two and button number nine, if you press them, I would say in combination, then it will work like that. So let's have a look at how that works in the uh, cockpit of the aircraft. So first of all, I'm going to press that specific button and then press the uh, the arrows right left to right so let's do that and here you can see the rudder trim i say works now right but if we want to reset the rudder trim i'm going to press the same button but then in combination with the button number two which will reset the view now think about this right we've got a lot of buttons over here for example the autopilot button the autopilot button has a lot of functionality like the flight director the navigation mode the altitude hold mode the vertical speed mode, the V and V mode, or the vertical navigation mode, the approach mode, heading mode, and a lot of other cool stuff. Wouldn't it be very useful if you can simply activate some of these functions by using your joystick? Likely, yes. Well, let's do that. So we're going to go back to the settings menu again, and inside the settings menu, we can go to the controls again, and then search for the autopilot. Right, the autopilot, as we all know, it contains a lot of functionality, such as the uh, speed hold, right, which is toggling the auto speed uh, hold mode, or you've got the on and off mode. In this case, it makes most sense to configure this one because it allows you to use the same button combination to switch it on or off, right? If we go for the autopilot, we can see it's assigned to button number 13. So button number 13, right? That's really cool because that's the button which is closest to the joystick. So we're going to press it or to the, to the yoke. So we're going to press this button. So button number 13. And then we can create a conflict, right? That's not what we want. 
So what makes most sense? Well, that really depends on your preparation, right? So if you prefer something, you can do, for example, in this case, button number 13 and button number 15, likely. In this case, let's scroll down, or button number 12 and number 13, right? Those are the buttons which are now being assigned to switch on that uh, airspeed hold mode. The same thing you can do for other modes, right? You can scroll down and you can say, for example, the altitude hold mode. Here again, we're going to pick the toggle one because it allows us to use the same button functionality to switch on or off the functionality. And we're going to use button number 13 and button number, what is it? Who knows? Button number 11, likely. Button number 11. And by using these smart tricks, you can do much more, right? So first, uh, for example, we've got the um, autopilot radio altitude mode. That's not very useful. Maybe the approach mode could be very useful, right? So you can press this option again. Make sure that you select the toggle one, press the option, press the two joystick buttons, and then you've got an additional functionality. And I can continue and continue with this because you can see there are a lot of options over here, including the uh, toggle, the autopilot, Heading mode, as well as the uh, localizer mode, which can, you can switch on the Mac uh, hold mode, which is likely not very specific to this aircraft, but you could use it in other aircrafts. And using this smart functionality, you will be able to, let's say, kind of extend the uh, number of buttons or functions to your joystick. Now, of course, the question is: Okay, where is the where are the boundaries? Right? Can we use more buttons? For example, can we use uh, three buttons? Well, let's figure out if that works, right? So we're going to go to the uh, toggle. Um, well, what should we do? The approach mode we already did. Uh, the back course mode could be, but also this one, the flight level change mode, right? The FLC mode, also very useful and used a lot. So in this case, we're going to press three buttons. Let's see if that works. Still works, right? Uh, so now we've got button number 11, 12, and 13. And those are assigned to that FLC mode. So you can see, I would say you can almost double or even triple or likely even more uh, times extend the functionality of the Trustmaster T16000 mic. Now let's check if that works, right? Because you can say, hey, yeah, I believe you, but let's see if it really works. Well, let's simply start the aircraft, right? We're going to do it the easy way. We're going to start the auto mode by uh, doing the auto engine start mode, which will do everything for us. Uh, so likely, I would say, the engines are running nice, right? So everybody's happy. Uh, so let's, now let's see if we can, let's say, switch on those modes. Uh, first of all, right, we've got the autopilot mode itself. So we're going to press it button. And that's where you see also the autopilot mode has now been enabled. Really cool, right? So let's now use the two combination mode. Let's see if it works. Here you can see, right? Altitude mode works. So that's how you can easily, I would say, use those buttons, right? Oh, it's the wrong one. <laughs> wrong combination, uh, which brought me back to the settings, right? So again, short repetition of what we did. Uh, you can go, in this case, because they're now assigned, you can change the filters to assigned, and you can see that we assigned multiple options, including even three buttons to the... Uh, with a to the specific functionalities of this aircraft, right? So the flight level change mode has been set to uh, three buttons, if I'm correct. Yeah, three. So that's nice. And the other ones have been set to two buttons. And with that, we're at the end of this video. So in this video, we looked at how to configure additional functionalities. So you can, for example, configure the or enable the autopilot or enable the altitude hold mode or enable the uh, vertical speed mode by using a combination of keys which you press on your joystick. This, of course, adds a lot of options, which makes it so much nicer to use this uh, joystick with Flight Simulator 2024. So if you've got some more feedback or some more tips, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. And else, I wish you happy flying using the Trustmaster T16000 mic and enjoy Flight Simulator 2024. And of course, I hope to see you back next time.